So first of all, thank you for Peter for giving me the floor and for inviting us and, and also from our side from the OEC, congratulations to the 25th anniversary of Blue Shield um, and a very important partner for, um, for us in, in, in recent years and hopefully for the years to come. Um, I'll be very brief because I want to leave enough time for all the other speakers and I looked at the agenda. This is, this is amazing uh, what kind and what partners you have gathered over the years and uh, what partnership has been developed over the past 25 years. So I will just take 10 to 15 minutes to show you what the OEC has done so far in this field and what our goal is to, to or where we want to go in the future. Uh, first of all, you heard yesterday, for those who were here, a lot about uh, the problem of trafficking in cultural property. And as I'm working for the Border Security and Management Unit of the uh, OEC's Transnational Threats Department, this is, let's say, our field of expertise or where we come in to help or to work. Um, just some short facts. Um, Works of art and artifacts are the third most trafficked commodity nowadays, and the rate of uh, trafficking in cultural property and artifacts and arts is on the rise. Um, we also talked about destruction and looting, and this is uh, something you will never be able to bring back. But what's also a problem connected to the trafficking in cultural property is that uh, terrorist groups and other criminal groups use those uh, revenues gained uh, with the trafficking to finance their uh, terrorist attacks and use it for money laundering. Um, what's also a problem, and you see the third point, is especially for terrorist groups or criminal groups that there's a lot of money in trafficking in cultural property. And as you can see right now, since we're Dealing with the gray zone, it's estimated between 3.5 to uh, over 6 billion US dollars annually. So this is where the OEC comes in. And just to give you uh, a little bit of base, what we are doing, um, we all our work is based on the OEC border security and management concept, was, which was established in 2005. And this is the basis for all our UB, which means unified budget and extra budgetary activities. I will get to that a bit later. Um, it also um, gives us or uh, the mandate to for the enforcement and implementation of international legal frameworks such as UNESCO, UN, SCR, and WCO conventions and resolutions, for example. But up until or, or for the first 10 to 11 years, we were dealing with uh, topics such as delimitation, demarcation, anti-corruption, uh, trafficking of small arm, arms and light weapons, drugs, and so on, but not with the trafficking in cultural property. Up until, uh, and I want to uh, put your attention on the top of the screen uh, where my mouse is, I don't know if you see my mouse, but. Uh, we have a security com uh, community magazine, and in this, in 2016, our boss, Dennis Cosgrove, who is a former FBI agent, uh, gave an interview, and within this interview, uh, he was talking about his uh, experiences from his former job, where he was working in uh, or against illicit trafficking in cultural property. And based on that article, we had a lot of requests by participating states to work more on this topic. And um, after sitting down and, and discussing the, the probability of such a project, uh, we then launched in 2016, our first project uh, on this phenomenon. Since then, we have achieved a lot. Well, no, of course not enough, but we have achieved a lot. Not only have we worked on uh, four regional awareness raising, um, conferences, um, which were held in regions such as Central Asia or Southeastern Europe, but we also work on 11 capacity building activities together with uh, the military training base in Kyrgyz, Greece or the WCO. 
when I talk about awareness raising, it's not about only uh, about the awareness raising that there is trafficking in cultural property, but also awareness raising for border guards. And this is mainly the, uh, the audience that we have in our trainings and in our conferences, what to do when they see something. Because as I said already uh, in, in the conference before, most of the times border guards, unfortunately, are now uh, art history majors. And therefore we have, they don't see in the first moment when they open a suitcase and they have an artifact or some stones in there, whether they're of worth or they're just souvenirs and not, let's say, so important. So therefore our job in awareness raising is to tell those border guards, first and second line border guards, when you see something, please report it. And this brings me to the next slide. Um, first of all, I want to uh, draw your attention to the center of the slide, which is our uh, cultural property resource platform. As I said, um, border guards have not the possibility to study art and art history and everything, and also be aware of weapons and drugs and so on. So therefore, our plan and our goal was not only to bring them trainings and conferences where they learn how to handle artifacts, how to recognize artifacts, but also to give them an online platform where they can quickly um, find resources and material, not only what to do with the artifacts, but also to whom they should reach out in case they find something. So as you see here in the middle, this is our platform. And if you are interested to get access to this platform, you will see my email address at the end of the presentation. Just write me and I will grant you access to this platform where you can find not only um, instructions and information for border services, customs, police, and army services, but also uh, other interesting um, material that has been gathered by all our partners. And this brings me to everything that uh, is around this center slide. Our partners over the years, and it's five years now, we have gathered a lot of them. And uh, you see Blue Shield, of course, but also Interpol, ICOM, the Carabinieri, UNESCO, I can name them all and, and unfortunately they, they wouldn't fit all on this slide because there are many, many more and we're happy about this, uh, about this um, huge group of partners because this is the only way to um, attack this issue and this phenomenon by working together. And this is um, once more uh, a reason that I'm very happy to speak here and to be allowed to speak here because also from, from the cooperation within Blue Shield, uh, we have established so much more and I will go into detail on my next slide what this includes because um, this is our plan. These are our plans for the future. So what you've seen now are, was our project that has, uh, was, that was running from 2016 up until this year. And as we closed our current project now, we started already our new project, which you see in the first line, will run for the next five years. And in this project, we tried to take a more advanced approach to this issue. So we're far beyond just raising awareness because by now everybody should know that this is an issue. I, don't, I know it's not the fact, so we will continue the awareness raising but we have to go beyond that. And um, first of all, in the middle you see, our plan is to hold an annual OSC wide meeting on combating the trafficking in cultural property, which will include all our participating states and partners for cooperation, but also include all the experts you have seen on the previous slides. And in this meeting, we want to gather all the, informa uh, gather all the information possible and at hand, we want to gather best practices and also lessons learned from the previous year, where there are new uh, routes for trafficking, where there are new techniques for trafficking, whatever uh, has been um, identified over the past year. And based on that, we want to build an action plan. And this action plan will then lead to the work of our new, newly uh, 
um, instated intercept team that is meant to be a team of experts also again gathered with all the partners that have been seen on the uh, previous slide that will go out to our participating states and will assess the situation based on the action plan what is needed and then give tailor-made trainings to those participating states to better attack this phenomenon. While this is the main string of the uh, upcoming project, we have a lot of in interesting and useful stuff going in parallel to that. First of all, on the left-hand side, you see communications. We have started to produce, unfortunately, they have not been released uh, so far, uh, a new podcast series that is supposed to go out on Spotify, hopefully early next year, that should also raise awareness on this topic in the broader public. As I've mentioned before, we have this police platform, uh, training platform that you have seen on the previous slide that will be expanded and worked on constantly to also include those lessons learned that I've talked about that we want to gather in the, our annual conference. We continuously work with our OEC field missions uh, to further work on the partnerships with uh, local entities. And last but not least, and this brings me back to the cooperation with, uh, with Blue Shield, we uh, are working on a postgraduate study program with the University of Krems. And this only came into play because uh, we got to know Anna Kaiser, who is uh, in, in the audience today, as I've seen, um, at a Blue Shield event in London, I think in 2019. And without that, we would have never started this fruitful cooperation. So networking, cooperating, partnerships are of utmost importance in this field. And this basically brings me to the conclusion that I want to, again, thank Blue Shield for all they have done for us, especially also Peter Stone, who has been an integral partner in our last training in, in Kilkis, Greece, for the uh, military training facility in Kilkis. And I hope that over the past years of, and also for the next 25, 50 and 75 years, our cooperation will still flourish as, as, as it has done over the past years. Thank you very much. Florian, thank you very much indeed for that. And um, I hope you're not anticipating me being around for the next 50 or 75 years. I would be looking very old and decrepit, even more so than I am. But our successors will be. I'm sure Emma will still be around. Um, so, uh, so that's grand. Thank you very much indeed for that presentation. Um, there are a number of points there that echoed issues that were picked up um, yesterday. And there are things, obviously, that we can um, we can add to the discussion. 